Welcome back to this new inspirational video. Today we're gonna go on with chapter 10, Further Use of the Will. Now, Wallace started this out by saying, you cannot retain a true and clear vision of wealth if you're constantly turning your attention to opposing pictures, whether they be external or imaginary. This right here, this one paragraph is instantly very, very important. We have to really understand what he just said. I'll repeat it. You cannot retain a true and clear vision of wealth or of whatever else you want if you are constantly turning your attention to opposing pictures, whether they be external or imaginary. Now the external pictures, the circumstances that surround us, the things that happen in the world can easily distract us from what we really want. My mentor would describe it as follows. The outside world is like looking into the past. It shows the manifestation of past ideas. So everything that you have currently in your life, they're just a manifestation of what you thought in the past. Now, not everything, maybe some stuff happened to you that just wasn't part of your own thinking necessarily that somebody else did to you. I know stuff like that does occur at times in our lives, but the immediate present that we're facing, the results that we get on an individual basis that we're currently experiencing is simply like we're looking into the past and that is very powerful if we can understand this i followed this up with an extra few lines that i wanted to share with you now which simply says live from the vision and give that expression so it takes the place of all old opposing stuff and this process always repeats itself you see no matter where you are you just want to build a bigger better vision of where you want to go with your life once you've achieved that place, you're going to desire to do even greater things and the process repeats itself. You're going to have to look beyond your current circumstances. That is what he meant with this first paragraph. That we have to stop letting the outside world control our minds. But we also want to be careful that our imagination is not building all sorts of contradicting and limiting ideas. When we doubt and fear or worry, that's what happens. We are unconsciously usually building pictures and visions in our minds of things going bad for us. If we stop doing that, we wield the power to create our lives in any direction we want. We can build in any direction, we can create anything we want. If this dawns upon us, we'll be totally free and in total control once and for all. Now Wallace went on to say that do not tell of your past troubles of a financial nature. If you've had them, do not think of them at all. Do not tell of the poverty of your parents or the hardships of your early life. To do any of these things is to mentally clash yourself with the poor for the time being, and it will certainly check the movements of things in your direction. Let the dead bury their dead, as Jesus said. Put poverty and all things that pertain to poverty completely behind you. You have accepted a certain theory of the universe as being correct, and are resting all your hopes of happiness on its being correct. So what can you gain by giving heed to conflicting theories? You know, that makes a lot of sense. Why would we start considering all the contradicting things that others might tell us or might be shown through our senses? It will only hold us back, it will only keep us stuck. Another important thing to consider is that Neville Goddard would once say that limitations that we face in our lives are due to weakness of willpower and poverty of our own imagination. You see, this is very powerful. If you have a great imagination full of wealth, you have visions and desires, you can clearly see it in your mind's eye, and you hold your willpower aimed at it, then you overcome all your limitations in life. But if we are feeling that we are limited, it's because we don't have enough power to keep ourselves focused on the riches that we could see through our imagination so that we can build our lives according to those visions. This is so important. Now Wallace went on to say, do not read religious books which tell you that the world is soon coming to an end. And do not read the writings of muckrackers and pessimistic philosophers who tell you that it is going to the devil. The world is not going to the devil, it is going to God. It is wonderful becoming. True, there may be a good many things in existing conditions which are disagreeable. But what is the use of studying them when they are certainly passing away? and when the study of them only tends to check their passing and keep them with us. Why give time and attention to things which are being removed by evolutionary growth, when you can hasten their removal only by promoting the evolutionary growth as far as your part of it goes? Let this dawn upon you, this one paragraph that I just shared with you, 
Long story short, what you want to do is start focusing on the visions and the actions you feel inspired to take in order that you may grow and overcome and literally outgrow the limitations you currently face. That is how you're promoting the evolutionary growth from an individual point of view. You don't want to get stuck in mass consciousness, mass fears. You want to start living for yourself and focus on your own desires. Because, as he said, no matter how horrible and seeming, maybe the conditions in certain countries, sections or places, you waste your time and destroy your own chances by considering them. You should interest yourself in the world's becoming rich. Think of the riches the world is coming into instead of the poverty it is growing out of. And bear in mind that the only way in which you can assist the world in growing rich is by growing rich yourself through the creative method and not the competitive one. Give your attention wholly to riches. Ignore poverty. Whenever you think or speak of those who are poor, think and speak of them as those who are becoming rich, as those who are to be congratulated rather than pitied. Then they and others will catch the inspiration and begin to search for the way out. You know, evolution from a metaphysical point of view simply means that if you use a vision, if you build a vision in your mind, you set mental evolution in progress. You start to apply your own mental evolution through which you can improve the quality of your life and the lives of others. It's all about using your consciousness in a certain way. Because I say that you are to give your whole time and mind and thought to riches, it does not follow that you are to be sordid or mean. To become really rich is the noblest aim you can have in life, for it includes everything else. On the competitive plane, the struggle to get rich is a godless scramble for power over other men. But when we come into the creative mind, all this is changed. All that is possible in the way of greatness and soul involvement of service and lofty endeavor comes by way of getting rich, always made possible by the use of things. If you lack for physical health, you will find that the attainment of it is conditional on your getting rich. Only those who are emancipated from financial worry and who have the means to live a carefree existence and follow hygienic practices can have and retain health. Moral and spiritual greatness is possible only to those who are above the competitive battle for existence and only those who are becoming rich on the plane of creative thought are free from the degrading influences of competition. If your heart is set on domestic happiness, remember that love flourishes best where there is refinement, a high level of thought and freedom from corrupting influences. And these are to be found only where riches are attained by the exercise of creative thought without strife or rivalry. You can aim at nothing so great or noble, Wallace repeats, as to become rich. And you must fix your attention upon your mental picture of riches to the exclusion of all that may tend to dim or obscure the vision. So in other words, no matter what happens, no matter all the setbacks you face, you have to keep yourself focused through your willpower on the vision of where you really want to go with your life. It may take a long time, it may happen very quickly for you, it doesn't really matter. The whole point of this is to learn to control your own mind and keep it focused on whatsoever you desire. It becomes so obvious that this is the way to total freedom if we really think about it. And I hope you see the truth of this for yourself. He went on to say that you must learn to see the underlying truth in all things. You must see beneath all seemingly wrong conditions the great one life ever moving forward toward fuller expression and more complete happiness. It is the truth that there is no such thing as poverty, that there is only wealth. Some people remain in poverty because they are ignorant of the fact that there is wealth for them. And these can best be taught by showing them the way to affluence in your own person and practice. Others are poor because while they feel that there is a way out, they are too intellectually indolent to put forth the mental effort necessary to find that way and travel it. And for these the very best thing you can do is to arouse their desires by showing them the happiness that comes from being rightly rich. Others still are poor because while they have some notion of science, they have become so swamped and lost in a maze of metaphysical and occult theories that they do not know which road to take. They try a mixture of many systems and fail in all. For these again, the very best thing to do is to show the right way in your own person and practice. 
An ounce of doing things is worth a pound of theorizing. The very best thing you can do for the whole world is to make the most of yourself. You can serve God and man in no more effective way than by getting rich. That is, if you get rich by the creative method and not by the competitive one. Wallace went on to say that he asserts that this book gives in detail the principles of the science of getting rich. And if that is true, you do not need to read any other book upon the subject. This may sound narrow and egotistical, but consider, there is no more scientific method of computation in mathematics than by addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. No other method is possible. There can be but one shortest distance between two points. There is only one way to think scientifically, and that is to think in the way that leads by the most direct and simple route to the goal. No man has yet formulated a briefer or less complex system than the one set forth herein. It has been stripped of all non-essentials. When you commence on this, lay all others aside. Put them out of your mind altogether. I read this book or study these videos, for example, every day. Keep it with you and commit it to memory and do not think about other systems and theories. If you do, you will begin to have doubts and to be uncertain and wavering in your thought and then you will begin to make failures. After you have made good and become rich, you may study other systems as much as you please, but until you are quite sure that you have gained what you want, do not read anything on this line but this book, unless it be the authors mentioned in the preface. And read only the most optimistic comments on the world's news, those in harmony with your picture. Also postpone your investigations into the occult, do not dabble in theosophy, spiritualism or kindred studies. It is very likely that the dead still live and are near, but if they are, let them alone. Mind your own business. Wherever the spirits of the dead may be, they have their own work to do and their own problems to solve, and we have no right to interfere with them. We cannot help them, and it is very doubtful whether they can help us, or whether we have any right to trespass upon their time if they can. Let the dead and the hereafter alone, and solve your own problem, get rich. If you begin to mix with the occult, you will start mental cross currents which will surely bring your hopes to shipwreck. Now this and the preceding chapters have brought us to the following statement of basic facts. There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made, and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe. A thought in this substance produces a thing that is imaged by the thought. Man can form things in his thought, and by impressing his thought upon formless substance, can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. In order to do this, man must pass from the competitive to the creative mind. He must form a clear mental picture of the things he wants, and hold this picture in his thoughts with the fixed purpose to get what he wants, and the unwavering faith that he does get what he wants closing his mind against all that may tend to shake his purpose, dim his vision, or quench his faith. And in addition to all this, we shall now see that he must live and act in a certain way. Now that was the end of the chapter. Again, this was some furtherance on how to use the will. In the last video we already went over the will, but this one is another reminder that we need to use our willpower to make sure that we really keep it focused on where we want to go. It has to dawn upon us that all we have to learn to do in life is to control our own minds. And if our minds are then controlled and led by visions of fulfilled desires, we can do absolutely incredible things, grow into an absolutely awesome direction for ourselves, and live a fulfilled life as time takes on through this dimension. So you have to use your will to hold the thoughts of what you want, and then work according to those ideas that you think inside your mind. So final note, I wanted to share these additional points with you. It is by remembering clearly that we have to keep building bigger and better visions for ourselves and how we go about our lives. This is what makes it so life doesn't become mundane and repetitive, but a great adventure of expansion and fuller expression. So every time you achieve the dream, you will find yourself desiring to achieve even greater things. Every time you face a situation that is not to your liking, you will have to build a vision of how you would want it to be instead. 
This especially works powerfully when it comes down to the relationships we have. We can resolve all conflicts by building a greater vision of harmony and then all we have to do is use our willpower to keep ourselves loyal and focused on giving that vision expression. If you want better results and greater success, again, build the vision of what you want and stay loyal and focused on that inside your consciousness. Dare to see it in your mind's eye and it will become a reality for you. Trust in the process. If this all dawns upon you, then you understand these words. Don't let others bring you down and most of all, don't bring yourself down by wrong thinking. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to receive inspirational videos on a regular basis. And with that being said, dear viewer, never forget that we are the dreamers. Thank you.